folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Last week I reviewed Weird, the Al Yankovic story that's on the Roku channel with Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter portraying the weirdish, nerdyish, accordion playing type of guy. You know, he has this long perm along with his glasses, his mustache, makes that smirk, wears a Hawaiian shirt. And just plays all of these musical parodies of popular artists, creating his own lyrics, you know, filled with demented, insane, edgy, but ingenious humor right there. And it was wildly hilarious. I mean, considering that this is a an orphorized or orphorized in some ways of another with accuracy and inaccuracy I mean half of it is true half of it is not but nevertheless it's pretty much a parody of his own but it works I mean even in this time period here but nevertheless we're out never disappoints us and he'll never will because he's just weirdly God and all of us <laughs> in that sort of way okay so now I'm finally going to be reviewing Weird Al's uh, very first theatrical film that came out on July 21st 1989 which was the year of summer blockbusters you know such as Batman and you know, Ghostbusters 2 Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Lethal Weapon 2, Indiana Jones, and The Last Crusade, Star Trek 5, um, The Final Frontier, so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, they were no match for all of them. It's simply called UHF. A story about a daydreamer named George Newman who started to run as general station manager of a run-down, struggling UHF Channel 62, which is somewhere in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where it was nothing but reruns and all these other news programs that sadly no one watches. But now, he has the genius to throw in the weird in Weird Al by actually putting all these uh, crazy, insane programs enough to go right up on the rooftop through these um, broadcast towers. And he, he's rivaling against a high-powered uh, VHF Channel 8. The insane antagonist, R.J. Fletcher, played by Kevin McCarthy. And he's also joined in with Michael Richards you know, from Seinfeld, who's been best known for playing Cosmo Kramer, as Stanley Spogowski, who's a former janitor at Channel 8. But now he becomes the janitor for Channel 62, and he becomes a children's television host. And he became so successful, too. And it also has Fran Dresser from The Nanny. And she's a comedian herself. Yeah, she plays um, Pamela Finkelstein, who's the secretary of Channel 62. And she's also the reporter as well. Yeah. So this is the MGM DVD release that I picked up way back in 2003. Although it came out in 2002, and I was really lucky to get this uh, at Fry's for a lot less than I expected, but I'm happy to own it. I, I got it for like around $14.99. That was a great deal at the time. Nowadays you can get this for, for like a dollar or, or two. <laughs> uh, there is a Blu-ray that came out um, later in 2014 
uh, by Shelf Factory. There was a special 25th anniversary edition. It has a different cover art and all. And, and it does carry all the features that's on this DVD set. But they did add a, a new extra exclusive uh, from Comic-Con 2014 that they have. Um, and it has a different menu, of course. Uh, I don't have that release yet, but maybe someday I'll take my chances. But, you know, I had to take some time to save my money. Because I am getting some more stuff for Black Friday and, and all that. And then other titles coming around. Because I just went out and I got some, some more 4Ks, but I still need to continue. And I hope this movie gets a 4K too. <laughs> For sure. Um, come on, Shell Factory. Got to be listening right there. Okay. And I know this was uh, part of the original cover art, but it was updated uh, for this DVD release, as you know. Yeah, you can see the spine right there. The MGM DVD, the MGM logo on, on the side. And then you get tons of the extras right there. All the way completely. Yeah. And it was released by Orion Pictures. Yeah, you can see we're out and pretty much anything he does. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, and by the way, um, if you watch this DVD, it has this awesome, incredibly insane menu that's hosted by We're Al himself. So this is another reason to keep your DVDs, folks, because you'll never get anything like this again. Yeah, and this is just a flipper disc, so it doesn't have the artwork or anything. But it is indeed in both widescreen and, and full frame, and it's anamorphic, and the transfer looks as, well, for a DVD, it was excellent at the time. But of course, you know, there's Blu-rays. As I mentioned, for Shelf Factory, and there's even an HD streaming print that's available online. Like you can find it on the on Roku, yeah, Roku channel, also, uh, as well as uh, various uh, streaming uh, services that you'll be able to find. You can watch it for free, but just be aware of ads coming around. <laughs> anyway, I love that in his audio commentary. Uh, with the director, Jay Levy. Uh, he actually sang at the beginning, um, well, before the MGM lion just showed up, he, he just says, hey, I don't remember that lion being in the movie. And he says, oh, okay. And that's where he sings, Orion, Orion, is bankrupt now. Yeah, where they show the Orion Pictures logo with the famous orchestrated uh, tune that they use on, on several of their films. Yeah. <laughs> but it's no longer bankrupt because it's owned by MGM. And they bought it back since 2013. Uh, some people say it was brought back in 2014. Well, yeah. But they had to continue to go through. <laughs> yeah, now they're releasing more movies too, and including uh, the movie Till. And just got a brand new logo as well. Hard to believe. <laughs> but this is definitely my favorite We're All movie. And I'll never get tired of this. Because this is where, like his uh, music video parodies that he's done. You know, with all those songs. I mean, he has done a lot of parodies in this movie. Even though he's a daydreamer, his character. Sort of like in a take of... Uh, the Secret Life of Walter Mitty, yeah, the original before we had the Ben Stiller version. Um, he basically dreams that he was in pretty much in all these uh, movie parodies of any kind. And then later he also dreamed that he was in a music video parody. And then he comes up with his own ideas that he had to think of in his head enough to make it more successful for this station. And... They even throw in a lot of these shows that you may have seen a lot on network television, you know, prime time or or any other syndicated networks or any other that you can think of, like all these local stations 
around. I mean, you got to be such a mad genius to come up with something like that. And that's what he did. <laughs> okay. But unfortunately, though, the movie was not a huge hit. Um, sadly, it completely bombed for sure. Through its $5 million budget, it only made $6.1 million. Ouch. But again, it was under the competition of all of these blockbuster films, you know, taking its toll. And that's why it sunk. But if it had made more, then, and if people had went to see this movie more, people would have recognized him more. And if people had watched MTV more, we would have had a huge hit. Okay, you know, if you want to continue to watch Batman, as well as uh, Lethal Weapon 2, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and Ghostbusters 2 and all, I'm good with, I'm, hey, I'm fun, I'm down with that, but sometimes I want to take some time to watch a comedy, so that way it can become a hit, and not just a cult following, but I'm glad it did got a cult following, because when it hit home video and Laserdisc, it, it I think it did, made some of its profit, I mean, because people started to you know, rent this movie. They had a chance to finally see it, so they missed it out on in the theater. And then later, they they started watching this on many channels, uh, including Comedy Central, which that's exactly where I first saw it. Uh, although I did saw it on home video as well. Um, but yeah, I watched it on Comedy Central a lot. And then that got to the point where I was hoping someday, if this movie gets a DVD release. I'm going to pick this up for sure. And I hope maybe I can get all these other albums to join in. And hopefully we get a DVD of all these Where Owl music videos that we got. So that's for sure. So I did. <laughs> and it was worth it. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, I'm always up for upgrades. So I'll just never get tired of watching them. <laughs> And yeah, the movie got mixed reviews when it came out in theaters, but I'm glad that it got some positives, thank goodness, out there. At least someone who gets it, for sure, that it's not taking itself too seriously. But Cisco and Eva, unfortunately, have panned the film, for sure, which I'm sorry, but I just don't understand. Um, it's kind of funny, though, too, because this movie came out just... Um, just before another uh, comedy, which is an Australian character named Yahoo Sirius. Yeah, an actor, comedian for sure. And I guess maybe that kind of take it away too. And maybe that's probably why the film didn't do so well. Also. Yeah. But of course, you know, summer was for everything here. So, here we go. Stars Where Are Yankovic, David Bell, as you may know from Heavyweights. Uh, he was also in The Cable Guy, and he's been in commercials, so now you know who this guy is. Uh, Fran Dresser, from The Nanny, of course. She was also in the movie This Is Spinal Tap, which is, of course, a mockumentary of its kind. Um, Michael Richards, once again, Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, he pretty much got his Kramer humor in there, too, right there. But he's also a comedian. You know, he's he was also on the TV show Fridays, this, the sketch comedy at the time. I mean, back in the 80s, like early 80s, before he became you know, well-known. But he's also been in other stuff, too, in movies like Problem Child. He was the villain in that film, too. And all that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kevin McCarthy, who, of course, has been best known for being in the original Evasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, he's... 
and, and uh, many others that he's done in his career. Uh, Victoria Jackson, who was a former cast member of Saturday Night Live. Yeah, which I know she was on the show since 1986 through 1992. And um, very beautiful, too. She's also a singer as well. But a wonderful comedian. Uh, Stanley Brock, um, who was from the TV show Days of Our Lives. Um, Sue Ann uh, Langan, uh, who was in movies like The Guide for the Merry Man and The Shaney uh, Social Club. Uh, Anthony Gary, yeah, from General Hospital. Uh, Billy Barfey, who who has done some several movies and, and some comedies and all, all this other stuff that he's done in his career. Um, in fact, he actually did a uh, a sketch comedy that was on KDOC uh, back in the late 80s. And interesting enough, since this was at the time when this came out. Um, but yes, um, he is a little man. But a genius. Uh, Trinidad Silva, which is one of his last movies that he's done. Because he's mostly a character actor. And he is a comedian too. I mean, he was. But, yeah, no longer with us. They dedicated to him too. Uh, Jed Watanabe, yes. <laughs> who, who has always been best known for playing Lon Duck Dung in Sixteen Candles. But he was also in the movie Mulan, along with its sequel, yeah, and of course, <laughs> he was just hilarious in this movie so much, and I'm going to explain that too, uh, because he was also in the movie Gun Ho with Michael Keaton, which was uh, directed by Ron Howard, yeah, so you'll never forgive him, you'll never forget him though. Uh, Van the Kobe Jr., uh, David Provell, John Paragon, yes, uh, no longer with us, uh, but he has done a lot of tremendous work with Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, he also had work uh, with um, Cassandra Peterson, also known as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and he's done a lot of comedy writing and direction around I mean he was just amazing and he will be missed uh, Belinda Barrow um, Belinda Bear Dr. Demento yes uh, he makes a, a cameo appearance in this uh, movie uh, Emo Phillips yes the comedian and actor who does his own stand up and all and with his Falsetto tone of voice that he does. Uh, Patrick Thomas O'Brien. Uh, the Kipper Kids. Um, and John Cattenhead. <laughs> of course, it's written by Al Yankovic himself, along with Jay Levy, who they both worked together um, with all the albums that he was doing at the time. And, of course, he directed this movie as well. The movie begins where we meet a day-and-night dreamer named George Newman, who's played by Weir R. Yankovic, of course. In fact, he just dreamed that he was Indiana Jones, our archaeologist, in the Raiders of the Lost Ark parody. <laughs> and you already know the story. is where he goes straight into the caves to find this missing idol, that he'll be ready to send straight to the museum. But he gets caught by all these traps. Including that giant boulder. That's chasing him around for sure. And then all these guards. Before he ends up going straight to the, the plane. And ready to leave until. Yes he got caught by the, the pet snake. <laughs> by his pilot. Okay. <laughs> uh, but the way they did this in this movie is just hilarious i mean of course 
his entire gang has just got run over and killed by locomotive and, and such. And then you see all these uh, traffic signs here and there. You know, all, all the stop signs of any kind, wrong way and all. And it has all these other um, traffic signs too. And he just grabbed the Oscar. <laughs> Until he got chased by the giant boulder straight into um, the entire uh, Rome of of um, Italy and Egypt and all other countries, and then straight into the streets, yeah, you know, like Main Street, and then got crushed. Well, anyway, uh, George has a best friend and roommate named Bob Steckler, who's played by. They would bow. They were bouncing between jobs after jobs. They just got fired, grilled, and thrown out by this giant uh, lady manager. <laughs> so, uh, George also has his long suffering but very cute um, girlfriend named Terry Campbell, played by Victoria Jackson. He also has an uncle who's a serious gambler. Who just won a poker game named Harvey Bobchick, played by Stanley Brock, along with his wife and George's aunt, Esther. No, not the Esther from Sanford and Son. You know, the uh, the religious type, uh, which Fred doesn't get along. Of course, she's the sister of of his wife. You know, deceased, but she always. Fred always makes fun of her, calling her names of any kind, and and then she's always saying, Rudget sucker! <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that Esther. But no, this is a different Esther, and it's a very nice and caring kind, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean, she can even pull his cheeks like this. <sighs> Alright. So, anyway, uh, George did win the Porco game to run... A run-down, nearly bankrupt, uh, analog uh, UHF television station somewhere in Tulsa, Oklahoma, to be exact. Um, but somewhere in o Oklahoma. Because <laughs> that's what the movie was shot at. So, of course, being a daydreamer slacker himself, uh, for sure, George joins in with Bob. To be put in charge to run the station, only to subside to find out that they're showing nothing but reruns of classic old shows such as Green Acres, Mr. Ed, and even the Beverly Hillbillies, all of which are all Filmways shows, which Orion Pictures and which is now MGM, of course. Well, except for the Beverly Hillbillies, because that's actually owned by Biacom, which is now Paramount, of course. Well, CBS, for sure. <laughs> but at this rate, Paramount. Um, well, it used to be Biacom CBS, too. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they show a lot of reruns of that show. I mean, of course, you can find that on all the other you know, UHS stations and all that. It's kind of like how they did that with... Um, with the UHS station in Los Angeles, which is KDOC, of course, Channel 56. I mean, they used to play a lot of constant uh, classic reruns of these shows. Uh, anyway, so when the package meant for their competitor, a high-powered uh, VHF uh, station called Channel 8, it's being misdelivered to George at Channel 62. So... Apparently, he decided to deliver it himself, and that's where we meet um, the owner of the station, who's the antagonist, uh, R.J. Fletcher, who's played by Kevin McCarthy. He's also joined by his son, uh, played by John Paragon, and also the rest of their goons and gains, for sure, including um, the mobster... Uh, played by David Prevell. You may remember him from uh, 
Mean Streets, yeah, who plays Tony uh, DeVazano. <laughs> yeah, he was also Snooze in The Sean Shake Redemption, uh, Sid Freed in Four Rooms, but he was also in the movie The Monster Squad. So he, you'll never forget his face every time you see him. And yeah, he was also in Sopranos, too, the TV show. Anyway, <laughs> okay. But we also meet uh, a very special janitor who was working at Channel 8 uh, named Stanley Spadowski, who's played by Michael Richards, who just got fired, thrown out. Uh, they even took his mop away because he's the only one who can care to, to do so, but they call, but yet. They're treating him like an idiot, for sure. But now, George had finally f hired him, for sure, to run Channel 62 as a janitor. And soon, he'll become the successful children's television host, which is, of course, the Stanley Spadelsky Clubhouse. Because uh, previously, uh, George just run the Uncle Nutsy's Clubhouse. And because George and Bob's were, were creating some very new programming on their schedule. Yeah, a lot of weird, uh, zany, uh, dark, demented shows. You know, even parodying a lot of those uh, game shows. Other soap operas, or not to mention... Uh, all these uh, variety shows that we got. I mean, not to mention action shows, uh, dramas, and all of that combined. I mean, it, yeah, like, like for example, you got the game show Wheel of Fish that's being the, run by a karate teacher named Kuni, played by Jet Watanabe. Yes, and, this, and his lines in this movie where he says, STUPID! You're so stupid! <laughs> yeah, I love that scene where um, he was at the karate class and all these, uh, all these, and as an instructor, and he's joining in with a bunch of students, and they're all, you know, you know, going the karate uh, fighting and chopping and all, and they, and they're all got thrown out of the window, you know, doing those high kicks and all. Because they're so stupid! <laughs> Supplies! Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I just I just gotta go on for that. Okay. We also got a, um, a pretty secretary, but very spunky, at Channel 62 named Pamela Finkelstein, played by Fran Dresser. And uh, she becomes uh, a long-time on-air reporter as well. Uh, she joins in with uh, her cameraman named uh, Noodles uh, Magnetosh, played by Billy Barty. Uh, while they were trying to do a report, which also focused on um, R.J. Fletcher, which, yeah, they were doing some other reports here and there about about something. Uh, his son eventually trips him. He suddenly got a uh, nasty boo-boo on his elbow. Yeah, that sucks. But don't worry, he's going to get his revenge at the end. Well, things were kind of falling apart uh, at the beginning. And I know he daydreamed uh, while trying to work on the schedule. Where, yes, that's where we get to see the music video parody of... Uh, dire Straits, uh, Money for Nothing, you know, I Want My MTV, <laughs> which I know uh, Sting actually sung the, the verse, but yeah, you know the song. <laughs> Got to restore a microwave oven, do the kitchen deliveries, he got the movies, refrigerators, he got the movies, color TV. <laughs> Uva Mover. Money is for nothing, chicks for free. Yeah. I want my 
I want my, I want my MTV. <laughs> no, but this time, what's, by the way, it is uh, Mark Nuffler's uh, band. Um, surprisingly, he had to he join in too with, with his band as well. But you got We're All uh, performing it too. Was this time it's a parody, but with uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> That's right. Um, because they also play that too. <laughs> um, yeah, which just had Jet Clappett and, and, you know, the rest. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, he was, um, um, anyway, he did, um, mention Terry that they were going to go out for a birthday dinner for her, which didn't work out because unfortunately he didn't show up. On time and and now um, he just got dumped by Terry so soon of course Stanley did took over for for George and all speaking of which I, I know um, Bob just played Bobble the clown <laughs> and all the kids were just bored out of their minds <laughs> yeah no kidding um, there was this funny scene where um, where Uncle Nutzel just uh, feed Bobble the clown uh, <laughs> some doggy treats, and he had to vomit too. And then he had to perform while playing with the horn, and yeah, he got hurt too, very bad. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so now uh, Stanley became very popular. Enough that George and Bob created a range of very bizarre shows, including the <laughs> um, the the one show where where Wow Hernandez um, was actually sh did his uh, animal show inside his apartment, where he, he ends up uh, grabbing a turtle and just flew it up in the air and it sticks, and then later he ends up taking all these poodles. And teaching them how to fly, which he just threw all these poodles out of the window. And it fell all the way down into the pavement to their deaths. Yeah, a little bit of animal cruelty right there. And there was other crazy programs around that's behind schedule. <laughs> and they went up the roof, too. Uh, all the way up to the broadcast towers, for sure. Um... Because it was even being run by this uh, very uh, peculiar uh, scientist um, who happens to be the station engineer. And yes, um, he's an alien too, named Philo, who's played by Anthony uh, Gary. Uh, yeah, there was a scene where while he, George was with Terry, he actually grabbed the bolts and the bolts of lightning and actually shoot him straight into his. Uh, perm hair <laughs> so just as a test right there okay so at this point on they begin to find out that they are losing money for sure they had to come up with seventy five thousand dollars by their bookie so that way if they can come up with this kind of money uh, they'll be able to save the station for sure. Otherwise, um, they're going to go straight to the toilet. So, with that aside, um, RJ offers to pay off Harvey's debt in exchange for the deed to Channel 62. So, with that aside, George decided to launch a telephone with the host of Stanley. So, that's where they get, which is just like those MDA uh, telephones. Yeah, that was hosted by Jerry Lewis, you know, just to raise money for muscular dystrophy for many um, patients around, enough to earn money to find a cure for them. Well, they had to do this to find a cure to earn more money to save the station, for sure. But RJ, of course, is just going around, begin to own the station, for sure, 
and that means he's going to shut it down permanently. But that's where uh, Philo had hijacked um, with security recorded footage of RJ, you know, during a confrontation with Terry when she came by in which he defends George and the station for sure. And also, uh, George did tend to make it up for, for Terry, you know, after the mistake he made for not showing up for her birthday dinner with the family. So, yes, that's where he, he sends out these uh, recorded uh, tape m uh, messages and then also throw in a lot of... Uh, heart balloons and candy and all that, just to forgive her for that. Um, and then later, you know, he started insulting the town's population, which at this rate, uh, he just uh, hijacked the footage to just put it into it. Yeah, all recorded it from a news broadcast. Yeah, by uh, jamming the system and all. And also... He began to find out that um, soon um, RJ's uh, entire goons had just kidnapped uh, Stanley uh, just when they were taking a break. And then, so yeah, they he got um, caught by those mobsters, um, all trapped, and they even put him straight into uh, the bathroom or the janitor room. And has all these boxes around while they're just playing poker. Um, so now George is on his own, which he daydreams that he's now Rambo. <laughs> so he's going around kicking ass. Yeah, he he found the Stanley that's being trapped inside the jail, sailor by all all the rest of the uh, the entire soldiers. So of course. <laughs> Goes around, finds a, a helicopter. Yeah, he has to pay for it, and then he just goes around, you know, taking out his machine guns and shooting all these soldiers, all these bad guys, and and doing all this stuff, all these stunts, and then, <laughs> and then, he just uh, got on to a a dual fight uh, between Channel Eight, uh, which is of course uh, R J. And uh, and George, you know, with Stanley joining in, and that's where <laughs> um, George ends up uh, destroying, bombing uh, all the other countries, even Hollywood, and that's where he finally found um, Stanley, that's being captured by all the of RJ's uh, goons, and yeah, he even used the line. I'm your worst nightmare. Yeah, starting to sound like Stallone. I'm your worst nightmare. Okay. So he got caught. Because I, I know Stanley was about to escape. And, of course, he actually shot the staple gun when he was in trying to hide out against him in the office. He <laughs> shot, uh, shot the, the head goon in, in the face for with all these staples around and, and all that. And then he was trying to, uh, you know, lock himself uh, out of the, the room and tries to, you know, block the door until they crash, you know, with their gun into the room so they get in. But then what saved the day was, you guessed it, folks, supplies! <laughs> Cooney and the rest of his uh, karate students. To the rescue. <laughs> and kicks all the goons' ass. So now they found both George and Stanley together. And now they're beginning to broadcast you know, all the money that they had to pay. And up to go for 70, 75000 <clears throat> Yeah, they had to send them in bonds to donate for sure, for charity. Until... Um, uh, George's uh, bookie had finally showed up. <clears throat> and now he finally got all the money. And they finally paid the entire station to finally be fully owned by George. 
Bob, Stanley, Pamela, and all the rest of the entire game. I also forgot to mention that there's this very peculiar, but very nice and generous uh, homeless guy who just wandered around at uh, the Channel 62 station building, who uh, George eventually donates uh, some change for him, but he actually gives him $20. That was really nice. But then next he saw him again when he was running around at uh, the Channel 8 building. And RJ just gave him the, a nice shiny uh, penny, enough for him to donate for over $2,000. Because they were pretty much short for, for the uh, entire offer to save the station. <laughs> but yeah, he... Uh, eventually um, help them out so they can give them to the bookie for sure <laughs> but guess what he also got a Rolex too which RJ really wanted for sure as a gift but couldn't try so now uh, Noodles finally gets his revenge on RJ Jr. he had tripped them straight into the mud and um, RJ, of course, gets kicked in the nuts by this old lady who's a viewer of Channel 8. <laughs> so now Stanley finally gets a home for sure. And now both George and Terry are together in a parody of Gone with the Wind <laughs> at the end. And that's where the credits roll and we get the, the, the song UHF. <laughs> yeah very hilarious comedy I loved it never get tired of it I, I watched this movie a lot when it was on TV and it, it's just fun a lot of memorable quotes memorable scenes very hilarious moments here and there uh, even ones I mentioned uh, I, I always like the moments when, when Stanley you know as the host just you know, goes around having everyone <laughs> having everyone going through all these games or like especially this little kid who was who was just walking in the mud and then just picked up um, what's hidden around and then he gets to drink the fire hose and and the fire hose was in full blast for sure. <laughs> and I I love those um all these parodies of all these shows that we got too, and I, I guess you can name it all. Um, there was also Gandhi 2, <laughs> which is a parody of um, Shaft. I thought, wow, so instead of uh, having to to become the promoter, he now becomes an action fighter. <laughs> I mean, wow. And... They also have parodies of commercials too, such as Spatula City, yeah, and um, and there's uh, also other places around, <laughs> um, and so on and so forth. Like you probably will see like any. Oh, oh yeah, uh, I wouldn't. I don't want to forget. The, there was a talk show parody of Gerardo Rivera, and yes, it has George. <laughs> Uh, pretty, pretty much just playing the Geraldo type, and I, I remember he was just, uh, he just found the, the one car, and, and it has, of this famous gangster, and, and then he found out that there's road maps, so he's also a private investigator, too, and I know they did a parody of, you know, that famous scene where, where, um, Gerardo actually got a broken nose you know, after, after a chair flew at him. Uh, yeah, it was during that um, the, the Ku Klux Klan um, controversial issue that was going on. You know, a racial issue, which, yeah, he had a broken nose uh, ap after this huge fight that happened. But it, it made it up perfectly uh, in this parody, and... And yes, and all these other, uh, a lot of hosts, uh, a lot of these uh, topics here and there. <laughs> yeah, Town Talk with George. <laughs> oh, and, and you know, 
one thing I would notice about the show too was that uh, of all the shows that they're broadcasting, while this movie is being shot in 35 millimeter, uh, half of this stuff was shot um, directly through TV cameras too. Like that's where you notice some broadcast masters. That that's where you see all these this greenish look to it, um, picture that they put into it. So of course, if you had to see this in the theater, I mean. It would be all cropped, but I was expecting maybe they could have added, uh, like they could have put in full frame, you know, four by three aspect ratio to, like they they can change aspect ratios here and there, um, simultaneously when when they shoot scenes like this. So they they really capture that uh, pretty well, but I could imagine that they did that for sure. So I had a loads of laughs right there. I mean, the Wheel of Fish was just hilarious, too. Um, I love the Wheel of Fish one because that's where the contestant uh, was going to win each of these fish around. Yeah, it's like Wheel of Fortune for fish. But the prize is either take this fish to eat, for sure, or what's in the box. You know, like there's a mystery box, and it turns out... It's nothing. Stupid! You're so stupid! <laughs> oh, it's just hilarious. And this also seems like a dedication nowadays with comedy because we just lost Bob Saget along with Gilbert Gottfried, uh, Louis Anderson, even Weir Owl's uh, Best friend for sure. Um, name uh, Judy Tenuta, who also plays the accordion as well. But she does have this childish uh, humor. Like sometimes she can even range to this tough voice right there. Uh, she was very cute. And now we just lost Gallagher uh, recently. And it's funny because I just reviewed Weird the Yankovic story. Uh, recently and Gallagher was in the movie well well an actor portraying Gallagher I mean he was best known for bringing this the sledge o to actually smash all these uh, watermelons and all these other kinds of foods uh, especially during his comic act that he did uh, it's it's just sad that he's gone and I know we just lost Kevin Conroy as the voice of Batman for sure which that does not do with comedy, but still, I just thought maybe I could throw that in there. Because I, I always love Batman the Animated Series along with Batman Beyond and all these other Batman shows we had. And, and I'll never forget that voice for sure. That menacing, uh, tough voice of your... Never forget. Because that's the Bruce Wayne and Batman we all know uh, for these series. And also, Where Are Yankovic is just terrific. Um, even as an actor, I mean, he really nailed this performance right here. I, it really shows, you know, he can even if he's doing all these music parodies and other stuff that he's done, I mean, this really shows a lot of comedic talent right there. And I wish he had done plenty if this movie had became so successful. This could have happened. It's sad that he had been in the slump. After his second album that he would work with uh, his director, Jay Levy. Which he did a great job directing this, by the way. Since this was probably his first. So it definitely had a lot of comic timing here and there. With all these uh, weird spoofs here and there. And the way the cinematography was done as well. Um, and also a very fresh cast too. I mean, Fran Dresser, hilarious as usual. So is Michael Richards. Um... It was very nice to have Kevin McCarthy to play a very uh, devious role. And Victoria Jackson, I mean, despite of being underused, I mean, to give some appearances here, I mean, hey, she, she was nice and sweet. And it was also nice to see the rest of a slew of uh, comedians that you're familiar with and some of the legendary actors, for sure, to provide their performances. I mean, they're just terrific. 
and the writing is just very sharp edge right there demented weird humor it's that's what you need for a comedy like this so anyway that's UHF and also grab some tweaky wiener sandwich while you're at it and not to mention maybe uh, a jelly bean uh, in, with pickles sandwich too with a drink and you'll just have a great time full of belly laughs and all so it's UHF and I give the movie five stars for sure I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye and we're out I love you, man.